Kenton Mark. The 19th century, which began in 1800 and ended in 1901, was a significant period in black history in North America. It was a revolutionary period that was rooted in great suffering, to which also spawned great change and transformation. In North America, human and civil rights, industrialization, and the system to which we call democracy, which can be argued, all paved the way for change. During this era, people of African descent, resiliency and determination helped propel modern and technological advancement throughout the world. Today, we will dive back into history to share with you three extraordinary black inventors that were born in the 1800s who were trailblazers of their time. During the mid 1800s, Southern blacks in the US suffered from violence, economic discrimination, and legal segregation. It was also a significant era for some of the greatest black pioneers and innovators in history, whom was either born in slavery or whose parents just came out of being enslaved. Although their race presented challenges at every turn, these following individuals are regarded as three of the most influential and most prominent inventors of their time. Elijah McCoy was born in Colchester, Ontario, Canada on May 2nd, 1844. In approximately 1837, his parents became freedom seekers and escaped from the enslavement through the Underground Railroad from Kentucky to Upper Canada. The Underground Railroad was an 1800 to 1865 secret network to formerly enslave people escaping from the U.S. to freedom in Canada. At the age of three, his family moved back to the U.S. and settled in Detroit, Michigan. At the age of 15, he left the U.S. for a mechanical engineering apprenticeship in Edinburgh, Scotland. In 1866, at the age of 22, McCoy and his family settled back in Michigan, where his father opened a tobacco business. Due to racial discrimination, as a result of skilled professional positions not being available for blacks at the time, he instead accepted a position as a locomotive fireman and oiler for the Michigan Central Railroad. Steam-powered engines of that era faced consistent mechanical problems as industrial lubricants would quickly wear off, overheating and corroding the machinery and wasting tremendous amount of fuel. The trains had to make frequent stops, so firemen such as McCoy were required to fuel the steam engine and ensuring the required amount of lubricants were manually applied to its mechanical moving parts, a time-consuming process that delayed many passengers and freight trains. With experience come expertise and knowledge. After six years on the job, McCoy identified a solution to the problem of engine lubrication and overheating. He developed a device commonly known as an oil drip cup, which without stopping the train would automatically apply oil, regulating the right amount of lubricant into the moving parts of the steam engine. This brilliant solution eliminated the need for manual oiling. On July 23, 1872, McCoy filed his first of many patents on a drip cup, registered under the title Improvement for Lubricators and Steam Engines. The innovation spread rapidly throughout the railroad business, revolutionized steam train and technology as it enabled locomotives to work without interruption, making railroad operations more efficient. McCoy's device not only improved train systems, it was an extremely time-saving and efficient and cost-effective solution. The engine combined with the lubricator drastically reduced the quality of coal and oil used in train travel. Because McCoy was of African descent, many companies were less willing to buy into the innovation. But the Michigan Central Railroad saw the long-term vision and adopted the new invention. While McCoy went on to improving the lubricating oil cup and also inventing other great things, it was considered to be his greatest invention. Due to McCoy's ingenuity, he became well-respected and accomplished. Booker T. Washington, a prominent black educator, author, and leader of that time, cited McCoy in his story of the Negro as a black inventor with the greatest number of U.S. patents. Many believe the namesake for the popular phrase, the real McCoy, 
meaning the real thing was first used by railroad engineers looking for McCoy's automatic drip cup instead of the knockoff version. Alexander Miles. Miles was believed to be born in Pickaway County, Ohio in 1838. As a young man, Miles eventually moved to Waukesha, Wisconsin, where he worked as a barber throughout the 1860s. After moving to Minnesota as a barber, Miles experienced great success which resulting in him opening his own barbershop in the four-story St. Louis Hotel. During this period in time, as a black man, establishing his own business, or any business, was unheard of. He showed his talents by creating and marketing hair products. Added to his success, after getting married and having a daughter, they invested in real estate by building a three-story brownstone building in an area that became known as Miles Block. It is said that it was during elevator rides with his daughter in the building he resided at, he realized a danger associated with an elevator shaft door accidentally being left open, where a person can fatally fall down a vertical hole elevator opening. During this period in time, elevator doors were built to manually open and shut by the elevator operator or by a passenger, and often the rider would get severely injured. Miles designed and attached a flexible belt to the elevator cage with levers. When the belt came into contact with the drums, positioned along the elevator shaft just above and below the floors, it allowed the elevator shaft doors to operate at the right time. When the elevator would arrive or depart from any given floors, the door would move automatically. The influence of his elevator pattern is still seen in modern designs. Miles' invention made riding in an elevator much safer. To this day, the automatic opening and closing of elevator and elevator shaft has employed a similar technology. While there were other inventors that created similar systems prior to Miles' design, he was able to patent his in 1887. Prior to his death, at one point during his life, he was considered the wealthiest black person in the Pacific Northwest area. Louis H. Latimer. Louis H. Latimer was born in Chelsea, Massachusetts on September 4, 1848. Latimer is said to be the son of formerly enslaved parents who prior to Louis's birth fled from slavery from Norfolk, Virginia, plantation during the 1830s. According to Biography.com, after escaping slavery, his father George Latimer was then captured in Boston and brought to trial as a fugitive and was defended by the great abolitionist Frederick Douglass and William Lloyd Garrison. Lewis's father eventually was able to purchase his own freedom. Growing up in Boston while in his teens, having deep feelings concerning abolition during the Civil War, it's said that he enlisted himself in the Union Navy and then after approximately three years, received an honorable discharge returning to Boston. Lewis was then able to find and secure work at a patent law firm, Grosby and Gold, where he worked a low-level position. Through observing draftsmen and the firm, he cultivated an interest in drafting and on his spare time while at home practiced his observation and taught himself how to sketch, patent drawing, and drafting. Through dedication, he was elevated to the job of chief draftsman, a position he held during much of his time at Grosby and Gold. During his mid-twenties, Latimer co-patented an improved toilet system at the time was known as water closet for railroad cars. A few years after, inventor Alexander Graham Bell, who was credited for patenting the first practical telephone and co-founded AT&T, hired him to draft the drawing for the patent of his telephone. In the early 1880s, Latimer then worked for the U.S. Electric Lighting Company under Hiram Maxim, who was the inventor of the first automatic machine gun. While working under Maxim gaining experience and while honing his talent, Lewis improved the method of production of carbon filaments for light bulbs which also allowed it to become more affordable for consumers. He then patented the carbon filament that extended the lifespan of light bulbs, where at the time light bulbs would often only last for a few days. Lewis went on to obtaining various patented inventions, which included the process for efficiently manufacturing 
the carbon filament, and the forerunner of the air conditioner. These are just three of the many extraordinary African descent inventors born during or around the period of North American slavery. What's even more remarkable than their inventions are their tenacity, resilience, willpower, and determination to defy the odd. During the 19th century and a part of the 20th century, systems of patents for inventions was not easy for African Americans at that time. It's important to understand that enslaved people were not considered people, they were not even U.S. citizens, and the rights of the U.S. Constitution did not apply to them at all. For I boldly say this, it's not the invention that makes the man or woman extraordinary, it's the individual himself or herself. In this era for many, when they think about great blacks in history, they often consider athletes such as Muhammad Ali or Michael Jordan, or celebrities such as Oprah, or musicians such as Michael Jackson or James Brown. For the individuals that are in tune with their history, they may immediately think of civil rights activist Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, or great figures heads such as former President Barack Obama and Nelson Mandela. But it's very seldom our great African descent inventors that rose up out of slavery, strife, and true struggles are considered or included in those conversations. Look, black contribution as a whole in arts, culture, and social justice is important to highlight. But the conversation and recognition should not just stop there. Let's not conform to allowing our current society, education system, and media to only spotlight black entertainers athletes, celebrities, and the obvious common name that come up as black leaders. Let's ensure we are championing these discussions so that our young generations are fully aware of how extraordinary the black diaspora is in all aspects. This should include everyday people who are hustling and grinding and who have made a significant impact throughout the world, ensuring their stories are shared to inspire others. Thank you for tuning in and for being open-minded. With knowledge comes understanding, and with understanding comes perspective. Please continue to seek and embrace your history, which provides us with the critical tools to cultivate growth and change for the present and future, which we thrive to do on this platform. Please like, share, and subscribe if you found this video educational, and feel free to leave a comment of your very own success. Until next time, peace king, peace queen.